Why, hello sexy people. I'm Hammy, I'm the Hammy Dressmaker, and welcome back to another Friday Sews. Right, it's been blooming ages since I've uh, spoke to you all, so I thought I'd pop on and say hi, so you don't forget what I look like. It's blooming up today. So I'm going to keep this quick so I can go and jump in the shower and then put something on more appropriate. Um, but what it has raised is I need some summer clothes. Quite, quite desperately I need some summer clothes. I really don't have enough and certainly nothing in black. So what am I going to talk to you about? Well, I haven't really been doing any garment sewing um, for a few reasons, but mainly because people who wants to come and view the house keep messing us about so I can't you know you know what it's like when you get into a garment project it just gets messy and I'm world's worst in fact I'm glad you can't see behind the camera because it's a bit of a mess um I've been working on the Harrison shirt and I was working on that kind of last weekend and I've come across a little bit of a head scratcher now I haven't really done a proper proper formal shirt like the Harrison shirt before. I've done shirts but none with the yoke detail at the back and when I'm putting the yoke on it's about an inch bigger than the actual sewn back pieces so I was like it's too hot for this. <laughs> too hot, too tired, don't want to don't do any more but that's slowly 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 coming together. I'm trying not to start on any other garment projects until I finish that one off because what I'm finding is my unfinished project pile is really really high um, and I've started each and every single one of those projects because I wanted the end result so I'd, I st want to stop distracting myself from the shiny shiny and new and actually get through the pain points of, of these garments and actually have, have them hung up ready ready to go in my wardrobe like they deserve to be um, so I think at the moment I've got something like six unfinished projects, that's scandalous. So no more until that is done, Gemma rule. We'll see how I'll do tomorrow, when I've, well Sunday when I've actually got some sewing time. Um, I also broke my fabric band in quite a spectacular style. Now I haven't spent hundreds of pounds but I gave myself a budget of 30 and I broke that in about an hour <laughs> and spent quite a bit more than that um, but I think they're all bargains what I've got so without further ado let me show you the fabrics I've got so the first fabric that I got was planned this was absolutely planned this is a cotton jersey um, from my friend Alison um, I have been waiting for this to come back into stock forever and I kept kind of talking myself out of it and I was like, you know what, you keep thinking about this fabric, therefore you must have it. It's got uh, all my favourite things on it, tropical butterflies and flowers and it's just going to be fabulous. So I've got two metres of that. haven't decided what I want to do with it, but because I've got two metres I'm thinking of a t-shirt. Um, I don't mind spending more on um, jersey fabric, one, because I'm not going to be spending like hundreds and hundreds of pounds on it, because it's always going to be t-shirts. And plus the fact with t-shirts, I think it's worth spending the extra money because really that's your, your, your casual, everyday sort of wear. I always think there's a t-shirt for every opportunity. Business, home, walking the dog. I always seem to be like wearing a t-shirt of some kind and t-shirts can be smart with office wear if you use the right fabric. So um, that that is currently... Um, waiting for for inspiration next one i got off um instagram uh, dstash um i think from sew me something and it's this rather fabulous very unusual fabric for me snakeskin fabric and it's a, a cotton sateen and um, it's just arrived today um, i've got one and a half meters for this and i got it for 10 pounds so i don't think that's too bad either it's quite a structured um, and heavy material, so I'm not quite sure 
again what pattern I'm going to use it's going to be a structured item it's going to be a shirt I think of some kind um, but in terms of what it's going to look like I don't know um, I was a little bit of a goth in my youth or I had like goth aspirations shall I say I went around wearing crosses and <laughs> dyeing my hair black but I never had the money to do the full goth wardrobe so I think that that sometimes influences some of the fabric I buy so I've got like quite a lot of tartan and stuff in my wardrobe as well um, waiting to be turned into things so whatever it's going to be um, made with I've got this beautiful heavy satin um, that um, my, fair, my fairy godmother sent through to me um, my, my anonymous donor um, which because it's quite a heavy material I think I need something heavy to kind of go with it so this is more likely to be a winter make um, but there's no way I could let that go it's too fabulous, too awesome Corduroy. So this is Rowan from the Soul Girls Vault. I was up like super early one morning, like I think half five on a Saturday. And um, as you do on Instagram, start scrolling. And I saw Rowan's story that Samantha Clara's studio um, was having a sale. And I think the week before I watched one of um, Rowan's vlogs and she pulled out this rather fabulous fabric and said so she got it on sale from Samantha Claridge. So I was like, ooh, don't know that fabric store, I'll give them a go. And my God, my God, there were so many lovely things for such a, a bargainous price um, that there was literally no way I could walk away with nothing. So the two fabrics I'm gonna show you next, I got for a total price of 20 pounds, which I think is um, so I've got this micro corduroy um, it's a little it's not quite as blue as what it's showing up on the camera it does have some quite a lot of green tone to it it's got a very um, fine micro uh, rib on it and I've got two and a half meters of this um, I keep going back and forth on what to make with this but for some reason I want to make trousers but because it's only one and a half meters and uh, I don't know so I'll wait for inspiration to strike on that one, but again, that's going into the stash until further notice. The next one, I do actually know what I'm gonna make with it. So this is a rather fantastic uh, scuba, but it's a scuba with some, some fleece on the back, so it's super soft. It's got a little bit of stretch to it, not much, so enough for, for me to treat it as a full woven rather than a stretch material and I won a pattern on eBay let me go and get it but this isn't the pattern that I was I was gonna show you I'll pop a picture up but I just found something actually for the corduroy this I think that'll look sweet so that's the possibility for the corduroy um, but essentially the, the skirt that I'm planning to make um, would be ideal for winter because I, I walk the dog in the morning and I want to be able to like walk the dog and then come straight back into the car get in the car and go off to work um, my office is very very cold in the winter so yeah that that will be fantastic for the winter months um, I'm planning a very simple six yoke skirt six go six go not si not six yoke six go skirt by the McCall's um, and I just really love the shape and it reminds me of the skirt that I did for, from Gertie's so it's kind of all vintage book where the, sh the shape really suits my proportions and makes me look curvy rather than fluffy which I am, I am curvy um, you know, work, work with those curves girls might as well, we're, we're with them we might as well use them right so I'm, uh, I've only got one and a half metres of this um, but if they had more when the, when the sale was on, I probably would have got three metres and probably made myself a coat. It's got a slightly waterproof texture to it. And the last fabric I got from uh, eBay from a company called JJ Textiles. They're actually based in Manchester where I live. And I just fell in love with the colour scheme. And again, it was one of those fabrics I kept going back to and going, I just went, you know what, I'm not buying anything else but the t-shirt fabric. I might as well treat myself. Um, so I've got three metres of, of this. 
Um, it's fantastic quality, um, really beautiful colours on it, um, pinks and purples and, and all sorts of happy things. So I've got myself three metres of that. Um, and that's all my purchases really. Um, now next month I am planning to go to Emmanuel's Fabrics in Burnley and they've very very kindly said I can film in there so I'll be able to do a um, fabric shop tour um, particularly the £1 a metre room where I seek uh, fabric for a coat so um, yeah I've not really I've done one jacket project before um, and it was a bit of a challenge um, I did 1950 styles coat if I get time I will pop a picture up um, and I had to go to sewing class to learn how to put the lining in it was a real challenge I still have that coat I don't particularly think it suits me in terms of my proportions um, but I'm so proud of it that I just can't let it go. I can't let it go. I'm, I'm super proud of that jacket. It was a technical challenge that I overcame and I, I can't let it go. Okay, um, so in terms of the coat project, I don't have a pattern yet. I do have one, I think I may have two actually. I think I've got two coat patterns within my stash. One is by Fibre Mood. And the other one is the Ellie and Mac uh, Duchess coat. Duchess coat is about four and a half metres worth of fabric. So, um, mm, but I do actually have the proper fabric for that. So I just need to do a toil. So I think that's the one I'm going to go for, I think. So if it works, I have two fabulous coats instead of one, right? So in terms of like the sewing this week, like I said before, I haven't got any garments to show you. Um, just because I haven't had time, but what I have been concentrating on is doing projects to help my organisation for the return to work. So I've got my return to work date, which is next Thursday, and I, I start back full time in the office. So the irony is, throughout the, the pandemic, I haven't needed many masks at all. I had two masks, one that I made very badly, and the other one I bought from uh, eBay with some real backups, but they, they were very scratchy and stuff. I didn't like wearing them. So I've been kind of operating basically on two masks. So one in the bag, one in the wash. Um, the irony is as we as the UK opens back up again, then my company, very sensibly in my opinion, are still enforcing the mask policy when you're away from your desk. Um, also, in terms of, I've mentioned it before on the channel that um, I have, I'm going to be going through some um, autoimmune treatment for my uh, scaly skin. That means under COVID, even though I'm vaccinated twice, I'm going to be classed as moderately at risk. So I'm going to, once I start on that treatment, I am going to have to be careful. So I really need to build up my mask um, stash quite a bit. So. I have been using existing fabric from my stash um, and I had a big pack of Harry Potter fabric. So the first thing I made was this little drawstring. So in terms of organisation, this has been intended to be a shoe bag. So again, when I come in from... Um, oh, I've got rubbish in here. Oh dear. Um, so when I come back from walking the dog, I can always have a pair of shoes like in the car because the first day I went back, I walked the dog. It was such it was such a, a tizzy to get to work on time that I left my trainers on. Luckily, my boss was cool with it, but um, I was like, right, okay, I need to think about that because I didn't have a dog before uh, lockdown. So kind of like uh, the morning routine, getting to work, and all of that is still. I, I don't have kind of habit form form stuff. So again, little drawstring bag, I used a pattern out of a Debbie Shaw book to, to get the dimensions and this took me about an hour, as if. Uh, I downloaded a um, mass pattern from um, So Very Easy and I've got these um, kind of ready to sew up and go so I'm going to be doing 10 of those. Mas mask talk isn't very interesting so I'm going to kind of skip past that but I am doing the ones with the, the wire nose. Um, I also, this week, very excitedly, I had a social. I actually went into a room with other people and we sat down and sewed and it was amazing. It, it was good. Giddy, I, was, I felt like I was drunk. I was so excited just to 
to be with someone who 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 is mad about fabric as me and they were all lovely ladies some of which i've met before some of which i haven't um, it was a really good atmosphere um, so that'll be like once a month i'll be going to that um, and i very boringly did masks because i just knew when i was going to go i was going to be so excited to see everyone that i didn't want anything too heavy so in terms of kind of projects this week like i say the this being a nice hot day show me that I really do need some summer wear. So I'm going to have a look in the stash and see what uh, inspires me. But I think I'm going to be making some more, and more of those satin tops. I really should do sway back to get the fit right, to be honest on them. But to, to be perfectly frank, that little bit of fabric at the back isn't bothering me enough in order for me to stop, do a load of pattern adjustment, do a toil and then sew them all up when I'm in need of them now so that's what I'm going to do probably on Sunday I'll try and do two of those and um, I also need to work on the Winslow clots when I've got time um, I've been really enjoying the craft projects though so I do want to kind of continue that and finish those those off so I'll probably work on that kind of tonight once I've walked El Doggo uh, El Doggo doesn't want to go for a walk at the moment he's in some sort of emo mood which is why I'm filming. Um, so I'll respect that and um, let him not be emo and then I'll take him out for a walk. Um, so tonight I'm planning to do a makeup case as well and um, oh I have also made something as well. So I, I made myself this rather brightly coloured fantastic um, lunch bag. Now when I posted this on Instagram the lovely Shirley from So Fabricate asked me how big my butties actually were. <laughs> I've done quite a big bag uh, because there is absolutely no shops or supermarkets or anything kind of around the corner from where I work. And, we, and when we go back to the office, we're no longer going to be having a canteen. Um, and also to maintain kind of a, a healthy eating regime, I think it's just time that I didn't rely on shops and started bringing my own. So like cereal, milk, all that sort of stuff is going to have to go in the bag at the start of the week, I'll populate my drawers and fridge and just bring in the things that I actually need to be chilled kind of on a daily basis. But that first day I'll definitely need a big a big bag like that. Just the, the colour of it just makes me incredibly happy. Um, I'd self-drafted the tote, um, so here's the pattern piece. That's the one fun thing about totes, you can just you can just make them up. To whatever size you want so uh, in terms of dimension it is 44 um, centimeters, centimeters to inches, no. yeah it's, it's 40 centimeters across but uh, slightly taller on the sides with um, a a four centimetre dip which turns into 16 centimetres when you do the two sides so you get a nice deep base do two the same thing put your, your weapon in at the top uh, and close it all sorry all up nice little job for an hour so makeup bag masks uh, I'm gonna have a um, women's accoutrements bag as well so I have those in the car and have those in the handbag as well um, and what else I'm going to do I'm probably going to do some headbands actually um, to keep things out of my face and use up some of my scraps as well and coordinate outfits so I did a massive clear out last weekend where if I couldn't find something to pair with another clothing item I threw it away, I threw away things that were sometimes badly made by me and sometimes badly made by others, things that didn't fit anymore, things that I just looked at and made me depressed and I got rid of four bin liners worth of clothes. So that was kind of a little bit of a wake up call going okay you need to be more um, careful about what you make um, and try and coordinate things together which is kind of a route I've, I've started going down kind of anyway. 
Um, but I've set up kind of 10 kind of work outfits all on hangers so I can just grab and go. So I think that will be quite a good organisational thing and it will force me to um, look at my, when I order fabrics what I'm going to be pairing it with and then try and match it with something in my wardrobe so I'll be a lot more um, conscientious in, in my purchases and uh, my makes as well. So considering I haven't sewn a garment I've, I've rattled on for 20 minutes so I will hopefully be back next week if not then the week after maybe with a garment maybe not <laughs> we'll see I'll see if I can battle through battle through the Harrison shirt to a conclusion um, which I'm really excited about I mean the, the bit that I have done looks really really good it's just this back bit which is giving me grief I'm not sure if I've kind of um, drawn it out wrong or I don't think it's my seam allowance because I had um, a magnetic gauge to, to stop me from uh, using the wrong seam allowance. So God knows, I'll have to have a look at that um, and decide what I've done wrong. So without further ado, I'll stop. I'll thank you very much for stopping by, uh, watching the channel. Thank you for everyone who subscribed. I'm like so close to 400 subscribers and that's like Thank you very much for anyone who subscribed and anyone who, who uh, sticks around. It means an awful lot. And um, I will be doing an actual sew along pretty soon. So I think I always I didn't want to just kind of do kind of sit at the camera and chat chat to you. I wanted to actually do sewing content. So because the staple vest is such a, a simple make that can be elevated with the fabric that you use and it's something that I'm very comfortable making I think that's going to be my first sew along and I'll try and do all the adjustments and camera and, and things like that so everyone can see what I'm doing so there is proper sewing content coming soon once my life calms down a bit <laughs> and I'm back into routine as always thanks for stopping by I see you again soon bye bye <laughs>